Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Have you ever wondered what all those settings are for keyframes? Well, this is all about keyframes in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, shout out goes to Fun Moment, who asked about keyframes and said, could you go through all the different settings in keyframes? I will. I tell you, I, I hardly use any of them other than ease in, ease out, and those very simple ones. But we're going to have a look at all of them. All right, let's get started. I'm going to create a bit of motion from this shape right here in my effects controls. I'll create a position keyframe move ahead, and when I click and drag this ahead, Premiere Pro creates a second keyframe, a linear one, automatically. I'm going to move my playhead in the middle of this and drag this down. And we've got three keyframes. So we've got an animation going from there, down to there, over to there. If you right click on any of these keyframes, you'll see two different choices, temporal interpolation and spatial interpolation. Temporal is time, spatial is space. So you can think of this as when, and this is where. I don't venture down into the spatial interpolation. I leave it where the setting turns on automatically, which is an automatic Bezier. You'll see four choices, linear, Bezier, auto Bezier, and continuous Bezier. And if we go over those, the linear one creates a uniform rate of change between keyframes. Bezier lets you manually adjust the shape of a graph and the rate of change on either side of the keyframe. You can create very smooth changes using this method. Auto Bezier creates a smooth rate of change through a keyframe. As you change a keyframe's value, the Auto Bezier uh, direction handles change to maintain a smooth transition. Continuous Bezier creates a smooth rate of change through a keyframe. However, unlike Auto Bezier interpolation method, Continuous Bezier lets you adjust direction handles manually as you change the shape of a graph on either side of the keyframe. So by default, this is Auto Bezier, and I've got this on a yellow background just so we can see the blue here a little bit easier. You can see the keyframe was smooth when I created this. Remember, that is a smooth keyframe for space. If we change this spatial interpolation to linear, you can see now it will jump from that point to that point. So the default setting that Premiere Pro, Auto Bezier for those motion paths is probably what you, you want for most natural kinds of, of animations. And I bet you lots of people haven't even ventured in there to change it because there's a limited um, value of, of going in and messing around there. The default is pretty good, but if we wanted to, we could change this. So if I looked at this, and change this to Bezier, that means that we can change one handle and not the other. So now we've got an animation that comes up, drops down, and then continues that way. If we put it on back on auto, it will smooth itself out. So it hasn't changed where this part is, it's just changed the entrance and the exit of those keyframes. If you move this handle, and we look, you can see it changed to continuous Bezier. So the auto, if we go back there, it's going to put it in auto. So as soon as you touch that, it's going to do something different. So that's the spatial interpolation. The, the temporal or the time interpolation to me is much more uh, important. For instance, let's just look at the last keyframe. See how it's very mechanical. So if we change this to ease in. Now when it gets to that last one, see how it eases in a little bit smoother. Much, much nicer. Now we do have those different ones. We have hold, ease in, ease out. I'll just show you hold for instance. So if we change this middle one to hold, it's going to wait so there's no animation because that, that, that keyframe is hold. It waits till the next one and then it moves. 
Hold keyframe is useful if you want something to jump positions. And you can have hold keyframe on scale. So I could have something scale, and then it looks like something was different because it didn't interpolate, but actually the scale property, boop, 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 and it just held that. So you can select all of these and go back to linear if we want. Let's look at changing this again from to Bezier. So now we have Bezier handles on all of this and we can drag these so I could scooch that in and this one there too. So now they're going smoothly in that way. Select them all and choose Auto Bezier creates a smooth rate of change through a keyframe. And as soon as you touch one of these, middle ones, you notice it stays on auto Bezier. If we went to continuous Bezier, there really doesn't look to be much difference between these two, but continuous Bezier lets you adjust direction handles manually. And as I showed you before, now when we go to Bezier, the spatial one allowed us to change and break these handles. If you hold the control key on Windows, the command key on Mac, you can break these handles. So I can make something look like it's jumping in and jumping down. So that's a manual one. And I, I put together a comparison here of three different balls. I've got linear is number one, auto is number two, and a manual one where I've created my own keyframes here. And to see this, you can open up position. So if you twirl this down, if you click here, you can actually drag this, make this area larger and, and see a little bit more of what's going on. So for the manual ones in here, clicking it and actually changing these handles here, which is how fast that ball comes in. And you can see on the linear ones, the linear one, it's a very robotic movement. And the auto Bezier, if we twirl that down and look at it, that's what the auto one looks like. And the manual one, I started with, with Bezier, and then I tweaked the, these handles in here. So you can tweak how far they're coming up. So let me drag that down. You can tweak that shape and how quickly it comes in to this. You can also zoom in and change the position here. So there are ways that you can really get tight into these keyframes to see how they're working. So you can adjust that motion. And we can be adjusting that motion while it's still playing. So how fast is it hitting that point? It seems to slow down. That's That jumps in a little bit more. And if we turn everything else on, we'll see that's the variations that you get, how things react on each one of those bounces. So there you go to our viewer fun moment, uh, just for you, a little bit about keyframes. Uh, I have to admit, I, I'm not the best at creating the most realistic animation. Um, most of that is done by people that in After Effects take time to do very realistic, uh, organic, uh, motion. I tend to use, like I said, I'll, I'll tweak those handles a little bit in, in temporal uh, Bezier handles or ease in, ease out. That's about it. I don't really go to that spatial stuff. I let the auto Bezier take place. Okay, 
So if you found this informative and you're new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us a little bit more, we're making it very easy through PayPal. There's a link in the description and also on the front page. You can donate monthly or a one-time donation. You can also use your credit card or debit card. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.